All right, ladies, buckle up. It's showtime. Well, hello again. It's Bobby Faulkner with you, you truth seekers and boat rockers, and we hope you're back here for part two uh, as we closed out part one, exposing some things about Sean Feck, Todd, Todd White, a little bit of Paul Washer, and, and, and uh, giving you some, uh, some information, sound doctrine, rightly divided. And we, we promised you we'd come back with a part two here. But of course, as always, my, my beautiful wife, Liz, is behind the camera. We do bring you the unmitigated excellence of the King James Bible, rightly divided. So we don't want to belabor an introduction here because obviously souls are at stake here. We like to do the introduction. It's, it's kind of nice to bring those things in about. But let's continue on with part two here. Let's start right out and watch this clip here. Now, if you cannot see the evil danger in the antics, the wrong doctrine, and the lies that come from guys like this, as we said before, you've got to dig in and study, rightly divided. Hopefully, as you look at these things, you can see that this is evil, evil stuff. This is Bethel at its finest right here. This is Bethel at its finest. Folks, this is satanic. It's evil. It's satanic. This is not God. This is not the Holy Spirit operating. It's garbage. It's captured and captivated thousands and thousands, if not millions in some cases, of people because they have bought into and believed it. And you can believe a lie long enough where it becomes your truth. Sometimes perception becomes people's truth. And if you think, you think, you think that this is the Holy Spirit, if you think because you got emotional, because you felt some presence, because you see people falling on the ground or, or whoa, and doing all kinds of little stupid things and, and speaking jib. Oh, I see, I see that you're gonna do, the, you know, they don't see anything. What they don't see is the fact that they're, they themselves in buying into this stuff and believing this stuff are on their way south and it's not going to go good when they face Jesus Christ. But this is, this is garbage. They're sending the people to, to hell laughing. They're laughing about it and jumping around and being squirrely. And it, it's extremely sad. It's, they say this is God. This is not. This is not the Holy Spirit. Wake up. People are following this stuff. They're, we, we, again, we could spend probably all day long. There's so many of these frauds out there, these deceitful workers out there. 
But this is extremely sad when people think they're safe and they think, oh, this is, this is the God. This is, that's not the gospel. The gospel is the gospel. It's 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. That's the gospel by which we are saved. That is the gospel by which we are saved. Nowhere else. Not in this dispensation of grace. And Ephesians 1, 12 through 14, when you read it, it says you trust in Christ, you hear it, you believe it, and then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption, until the day he redeems us and takes us up to heaven. Now, I mean, and come on, puppets, the laughing, this is somehow the preaching of the gospel. And what is that one guy doing on that other guy's neck? Doing, you know, this, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's not funny. I mean, what was that? What was that? Take a look at that again. I mean, these people think that's something to do with God and the Holy Spirit. That's absolutely, there's not even, I don't even know why we have to explain it. When you see something like that, we should not have to even explain that. What was that guy doing? And the guy with the puppets on the girl's head and stuff like that. Come on, folks. They, they think, they treat this as a, like it's a joke. Like the Holy Spirit. You talk about mocking the Holy Spirit, which, you know, there is no blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. All sins are forgiven in this, but still. It's not helping anybody for their eternity. Hopefully you are stunned by this. You should be stunned by people like Bill Johnson and, and, and Todd White and Sean Fecht and all these different people that do all these things. Some of them, it's lightweight. It doesn't, oh, that's not so bad. Oh, to, you know, let them be or whatever. Are they leading people? No, they're not leading people anywhere except South with a smile on their face. Let's watch a little more. Speaking of Bill Johnson. Is it okay if I lay hands on you while I'm talking to you? I saw a wave of worship. I saw a wave of worship hitting, hitting you. Yeah. I saw, I saw that there was no separation from worship in the church to the streets. Whoa! We just saw, I just saw it. Whew. It's this like extravagant, uncontainable worship. It's like a fire. Yeah, mama, we bless you. Mama, we bless you. Whoa. Yeah, and I just... Whew. You'll be known for worshiping, extravagant worship, laid down lovers. You couldn't, it's like it won't be stopped. It's like people will just fall on their knees and have no idea why. And they'll encounter the Lord. Yeah, bless Netherlands to worship the Netherlands. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Bill Johnson, he's right there, condemning, allowing the satanic evil. I mean, the guttural sounds and, and that girl, ah! you know, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever she did there. I mean, come on, <laughs> really? That's, that's the Holy Spirit in operation, is it? But that's what they believe. And the people, they plot it, applaud it and cheer it and they stand there in awe, thinking like, man, I wish I was that. I wish I could do that. I wish the Lord would speak to me like that. I did that years ago when that false prophet, Kim Clement, who's now deceased, called me out of a big audience up in Hollywood and, oh, you're going to this and you're going to that or whatever. I'm still waiting, still waiting there. Of course, I can't go to him now and say, hey, you were a liar. But uh, that's not the point. The point is, this stuff is going on here. The, all this gibberish and craziness and thinking they see something and, and, and speaking into these people's lives, yet somehow the people are blinded by the thousands and thousands and think these are works of God. And... It's not, it's just not. But let's also take a look at the queen of unusual sounds and ridiculous antics, Heidi Baker. Take a look. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna put it on somebody else's head, a watch, and then say, more Lord. Whoa! More Lord. Everybody, place, place that anointing that crown, that gift upon someone else's head. <laughs> Keep praying. Every single one of you, impartation, legacy, 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 legacy. Increase your glory. More, Lord. Try it again, try it again, try it again, try it again. More Lord! Fire! There's fire. Place it on their heads. Find somebody. I think he's got it. 
Shake up, Baba. Fire. Place it on another one's head. Fire. Legacy. Legacy. The greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. Prophesy over them ten times. Start to prophesy over it. Now, she says, take it. Put it on someone's head. Put it on this crown. This this. Put it on someone's head. <laughs> wow, really? Put what on their head, Heidi? An imaginary crown. And don't forget to say, whoa, whoa. You know, Heidi with that, whoa. All of a sudden, that's where these people get that stuff, like that girl in that Bill Johnson clip. Ugh, you know, they do all that stuff. What is that? Where does that come from? That's not the Holy Spirit. Folks, come on. Really? You know, I'm pretty vehement about this because I fell for that garbage, that dung, a long time ago. My wife did too. Not anymore. Not for a long time now. And this rain, I'm sorry, vain repetition of the, the uh, evil, it's, it's a legacy, 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 legacy. I guess if you say legacy enough, you're going to have one. I mean, <laughs> legacy, leg and calling fire down. More, Lord, more, Lord. Wow, folks. Come on, you people that are following this stuff, we're not mad at you, but we are, I guess if the way to say it, mad at them, we're only mad if you want to call it that way because they're taking people down. They're leading people to hell on the lake of fire. No gospel, these antics, this gibberish, this nonsense, these guttural sounds, these so-called things that are going on, it's it's absolutely unbelievable, and people think it's godly. The people, they're so mesmerized by it and captivated by it, and it's because someone has a name, because they claim something, because they have the support of all these other false prophets and deceitful workers. And that poor kid on the ground there, wow. How is that not the saddest thing you could see? Squirming around and, and, uh, and like, he's in, like he's on fire in pain or something. That's horrific. Satan is after everyone. But man, I'm telling you, we've been saying this for a long time. And it's not just because we say it. He's after kids. He's after your kids. He's after your kids, your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews. If he can take this generation down and everyone thereafter with all this garbage, he wins, doesn't he? This is a battle for souls. This isn't about who's right or wrong. God's the one that's right. Every man be a liar. God's the only one that's right. And it has to be rightly divided. Where do we belong today? Who is speaking? Who are they speaking to? And what is being said? So this is about eternity here, folks. That kid, I mean, that, that, that what he thinks he's suffering right there, he probably doesn't even know what he's doing. He's just probably in la-la land somewhere. That's not even remotely close to the eternal suffering that people will have when they're not in heaven. We, none of us can really understand that. It's just going to be horrific to say the least. Let's watch a little more. I'm telling you, try it again. Some of you give up too easily. Try it again. Find somebody. Put a crown on their head. Whatever anointing you have in your life, Whatever anointing you have on your life, you just put it on the next person. And you say 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. So try what again, Heidi? Try what again? What what anointed crown? What anointed crown does she want? Try it again, she says. Ten times, ten times, ten times. Uh, that's, uh, we repeated legacy over and over. Now we're going to repeat ten times, ten times. Really? <laughs> Why not nine times? Why not eleven? But what is this? This is nonsense. This is evil and it's satanic. So many people will defend these people, Heidi Bakers and 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 the the Mark Hemans and and all Todd Whites. They'll defend them to the death because they're blinded. You're if you're watching this stuff and you're following this, we did 
We did. We cannot say that enough. We fell for it too. We're not smarter than you. We're not holier than you. We're not ones that think we've got it all put together. But we made a choice years ago to study Rightly Divided. It was presented to us. My wife discovered us from Truth Time Radio. And I got to give the credit there. We have always all along. But it's not about a man. It's about the Bible, Rightly Divided. It's about you have to make a choice to study and put in the work. It's going to take work, not you flopping around, getting emotional, getting warm fuzzies, having dreams, thinking all these things are happening. So, but, and you can hear the chaotic screaming in the background too of people. That, I've been in, in so-called services where that's happening. It's, this is beyond evil, folks. It's beyond evil. But uh, let's watch a little more here of Bethel's so-called children's ministry. This is tragic. Take a look. I live with the joy that I have the greatest job in the entire world, but I also have the most important job. I realize I shape what the entire world looks like in 20 years. Our biggest priority is to make sure these kids encounter God. We're going to have a perfect health zone in this room, in this church, and then in the entire city. I asked a little girl where the angels were in the room and she pointed off and said there's one over there by the first graders so I asked her I said do you know why he's here and she took off and I think she went and talked to the angel and when she came back she said he's here for healing so I had her send all the kids over to the first grade mat where the angel was and just a little bit of time later every single child was healed in the room and no one even had to pray that's just for all the people. Some people have a problem with the imagination, and God doesn't. So this little boy, our, the teacher was saying, picture Jesus in your imagination. And so the kids are there soaking and closing their eyes. And, and then the teacher says, um, if you can't see Jesus, it might be because you're so busy looking at so many other things that you can't see him. Now, children's ministry? It's children's poisoning is more like it. They are poisoning. This makes me mad. And, and often when I'm researching these things, it, I, I, I break down. I, I, and that's not, so what? You know, it's, it, but it just brings me to tears because they are poisoning these children especially to such a degree that these children, this guy is claiming, this guy calls himself a youth pastor, a children's pastor, whatever, he's not. Claims they saw angels and he sent them all into the corner of the room where this one said she saw the angel and all the children got healed. Of what? Were they all sick? Were, were they all injured? What? what how? Number one, it didn't happen. There weren't any angels in that room. It's an ima Kids make up imaginary things. We all can. We all can do that. But how'd they, how'd they all get healed? What'd they get healed of? It's, it's, this is utterly ridiculous stuff. How do you reconcile that and say that that's okay just because he said it just because it's a Bethel just because they claim this it's not true folks it's not true I don't know what the kids are kids kids are they're gonna make up all kinds of the people say kids are innocent well we're all born into Adam everyone's born into sin in this world and I'm not gonna get crazy and start saying all kids are evil or anything like that either. But come on. I mean, really, kids make up stories. They have imaginary friends and stuff. I don't know, maybe some of you did. I, don't, I can't remember if I did or not. I can't remember that far back. It's been a while. But uh, I one time thought I saw angels. <laughs> I was an adult because I was believing all this, this crap, this dung, this garbage. And that's how it can poison you. But anyway, and he says the kids were soaking what, in a bathtub, bubble bath? What were they soaking in? But that's a, a term they like to use. They're soaking in the spirit. They're, they're, they're so, the kids, the kids, they're, the kids are soaking now. It's bad enough the adults think they're soaking in something. And they even have so-called soaking. Todd Bentley has a soaking music. I think Patricia King does too. Uh, but soaking, find that anywhere in scripture. Find that anywhere, Old Testament, New Testament, anywhere in between. It, it's not there. Soaking, huh? 
And to tell kids that if they can't see Jesus, maybe they're looking at too many other things. Wow. <laughs> to kids. To kids. These people are evil. They're evil, folks. They're evil. This is wrong. It's satanic and it's telling kids that. If you can't see Jesus, what he, he's going to, oh, oh, there he is over there. Yeah. We see Jesus by studying the written word he has given us called the Bible and then rightly dividing it. These kids aren't being taught anything even close to that, not anything even remotely that, and no gospel. This should make you angry. This should make you, maybe your kids aren't going there. Maybe they are. Maybe some of you are watching this. Better pay attention. If, if it is you, if you're anywhere that does this kind of stuff, there's no gospel here. And if you say, well, I don't know about this. I don't know who this guy is. I don't even know who Bill Johnson is. I don't know who Todd White is. I don't follow those guys. People are by the thousands and thousands. It may be somebody you know. It may be a friend, a neighbor. Maybe your cousin, your nephew, your uncle. Who knows? We, we have gotten emails from people and comments from, from people that are following our YouTube. And thank you very much, by the way, because we know you're getting the truth rightly divided. But that they've said they live in a household where they're the only one that rightly divides and their spouse doesn't or their son or their daughter doesn't. I mean, man, it's tough. And people are made because of wrong doctrine, made to feel guilty about stuff. Our, there's no condemnation when you're in Christ Jesus. Our sins are forgiven. So all these things, this is why Paul says, shun profane and vain babblings because they lead unto more ungodliness. This is what happens, more ungodliness. That means there's ungodliness and it leads into more. So that's what we have to be careful of here. Let's watch another clip. And one time I was laying on the floor, actually it was in this room. I'm laying on the floor and in, an, in a vision, in an encounter with God, in a vision, Jesus picks me up and holds me so close that I can't see anything. And he holds me so close and Jesus starts to weep. And he says, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I said, what are you talking about? Please forgive you. He said, when that pastor hurt you, it's as if I hurt you. An encounter, one of their favorite phrases, an encounter, he says, and a vision with God. This guy now that's poisoning these children, this is just one guy. This is just one guy at Bethel doing this. It's all over. It's widespread. It's global. But this is this one. It says he had an encounter and a vision with God and Jesus picks him up. Sure he did. Sure he did. Jesus just came down and found you so awesome. What are you, Todd White? You're so awesome and so incredible, he picked you up. And then he says, Jesus weeps at, with him. Jesus weeped with him. Pay attention to this here. And Jesus asked for forgiveness. This lying, man, I, you know, I have some words, but I got to stay out of my flesh on this here. This lying person says that Jesus picks him up, Jesus weeps, and asks him for forgiveness because it was Jesus' fault of what happened to him. <sighs> I mean, that's, that's just outright lies. That's an outright lie. That's just blasphemy, blasphemy to the bone. I, you know, come on, folks. This cannot possibly be needing of an explanation, but it does. But it does, but it does. And please pass these things on to people. Let people see these videos. We're not the only ones. We know there's not many out there rightly dividing. There's others out there exposing these things and given sound doctrine rightly divided, but it's not very many. That's why people like a Todd White have over a half a million YouTube viewers. And think about it. We're not looking for, the only reason we want a lot of viewers is because that means more people can get the truth rightly divided and see these frauds for what they are. That's the only reason we care. We don't do this for thumbs up. We said this before, thumbs up, thumbs down. We appreciate that when you do do that. We appreciate when you leave good comments and there are people that leave some, some outright stupid ones and silly ones and we'll try to address them if they're willing to learn. But you know, it's just, it boils down to this. These people have thousands and thousands of people following them and uh, it's dangerous and people are going to hell in a handbasket and don't even know it.
They don't even know it. We didn't know we weren't saved. We didn't know it. We did not know it. We raised our hands first. We did not know it because we weren't rightly dividing the word of truth. We didn't understand the gospel. We heard all, my wife grew up in it. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. All these other things. The speaking in the, it's not about the speaking in the tongue. It is, but it isn't. That's not the, the main point. It's not about the tithing, which is wrong. That's that's the law. It's weak and beggarly. We don't, we're not under the law. We're under grace. It's not about water baptism, which we don't do. That's not in our our dispensation of grace from our apostle Paul. He only did certain things at the beginning of his ministry, ministering to unbelieving Israel, and then he stopped and he just went strictly to the Gentiles. That's why they were given the right hands of fellowship, by the way, as an example. But this is about no gospel being preached to people. So that is the main thing. Let the main thing be the main. The main thing is the gospel by which we are saved. That's what these guys should be preaching. They don't do it because they don't believe it. They say they do, they utter the words, they speak the name Jesus, they claim all these antics, but they don't believe Paul's gospel is where we all belong for today. That is where we belong in Paul's gospel from Romans to Philemon and even within there, as you know, those of you that know how to rightly divide are growing and learning in it, and we all are. There are portions of Paul's gospel where he's speaking to and about Israel too, so you must be careful. You have to even, that's why it's study. It takes work. My wife and I sit, and I'm not patting us on the back here. We've chosen for quite a long time now. We'll sit and study. Every morning we get up and we're reading and we break it down. We're breaking down. This is the way the Lord gives you understanding. You read it and repetition is the best teacher. You read it and read. We start with Romans and go all the way to Philemon. Then we go back to Romans, go all the way to Philemon. And we're not just reading, reading, reading. We're stopping, taking our time. We might read one chapter a day. And it's, you know, however long that takes and break down the various sentences. Wow, here's what this says. Here's what this means. Here's what the Lord's showing us. So this is important. So anyway, let's move on to a little bit more. Back to Sean Fecht. Back to Sean Fecht. Oh boy. Okay. All you need to know about Sean Fecht is this. All right, here we go. Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to have a hero, a legend of the faith, a father, a spiritual father, somebody that's been just such an encouragement in my life since I was really a teenager. And we're going to have him jump on here. It's going to be epic. We're going to talk about what the Lord is doing in America, give you a little bit of the dream of what took place at the call in 2000, uh, the moment that really changed my life. And I was 17 years old and mobilized for something called The Call, which took place uh, in 2000. Had no idea what it was, who it was for, what was happening. We just heard that there was a, a movement to bring people to pray for America, to take a stand, to fast, to believe for revival. And I was all about that. And so I am so excited. This man, the legend, the hero is joining us. We're going to be waiting for him to connect. There he is. Hey, Sean. So his hero, his legend, no, a legend, I should say, his spiritual father, Lou Engel. Lou Engel, E-N-G-E-L. Fraud extraordinaire. Lou Engel, fraud extraordinaire. We're not going to take up a bunch of time here and, and go into a bunch of Lou Engel stuff here. Look them up. These guys are liars, folks. Come on, we got to call it like it is. Paul said, mark them and, and avoid them. Mark them, call them out. They're, they serve their own bellies. They serve not the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. They're enemies of the cross. They speak it, but they're enemies of the cross. So that's his hero. And, uh, I mean, really, so now, so that's all you need to really know about that there is that that's, that's Sean Feck, that's it. But let's, let's take a little look at uh, him, Sean Feck, and Mike Bickle. So we are here in Kansas City with my hero, my friend, <laughs> the legend, Mike Bickle. We're here at the House of Prayer, and I am so 
excited for tonight. I'm so honored to be here. It's a full circle moment for me. And I just wanted uh, to give an opportunity for Mike to share. Actually, I'm letting you guys in on the conversation we're having because I want you to hear the things the Lord has spoken to him about this season for such a time as this, 2020. What is God doing? Well, first of all, I love our friendship and I love who you are in the spirit and what you represent that reach to touch God's heart and that reach to release his power so other people are touched so they can touch his heart. And I just love that about you and the whole company of young worship leaders. To me, you're young. You know, I'm 65. <laughs> to some of them, you're old. <laughs> I oh, Sean, you're doing it. And you're here in Kansas City. And I'm expecting a lot of folks to gather and you're on a stage and you're just declaring the supremacy, the beauty, the leadership of Jesus over our city and worship. And some people are going to get saved and healed for yeah, sure. Okay, so as usual, these guys, I, I know it makes people mad, but they're liars. I'm not going to apologize for it. They're fr Paul calls them deceitful workers, false apostles. Jesus, during his ministry time on earth, what did he call people? Twice dead man's bones, whitewashed sepulchers, vipers. They didn't swear back then, I guess. Like, you know, we're not going to swear either, of course, but those were harsh words. When Paul called somebody out, it was harsh. These are, these are what these guys are. Deceitful workers, false apostles. They're deceiving and deceived themselves. Deceiving and deceived. So as usual, these liars say that the Lord spoke to them about a season. About it. It's always a season. It's always a season of something. What, winter, spring, summer, or fall? What do you, Carol King? You know? Winter, spring, summer, or fall. A season. There's a season for this, a season for that. I don't know if they're cooking or what. But and I don't, This isn't funny, but i got to throw something in there just to, you know, just to do it, I guess. But so he spoke to them about a season, really? So... And, and yeah, God spoke to Mike Bickle, of course. Of course he did. He didn't speak to, you know, he spoke to Mike Bickle because Mike's such an astute guy and, and he's the, you know, another hero and legend and he's been around for a long time. He's got the IHOP so-called church out there. I mean, come on. God speaks during this for a long time now through his written word. That's how God speaks. He's not doing it like he did before from the garden and on forward where he spoke to people directly. He spoke to our apostle Paul through revelation and he's speaking through it. The canon is closed. He speaks to us through his written word. If you allow him to, we have to be walking in the spirit, being led by the spirit. And you can't be led by the spirit unless you're saved. You're not sealed with the Holy Spirit unless you're saved by the gospel of salvation and that alone. That That's it right there. So, and he tells them the beauty and the leadership and the supremacy. And of course, every everyone's going to get healed. This is all they care about is how good they look, how eloquent they can speak, the excitement, the emotion, the fervency of all that there. And of course, people get healed. Folks, come on, come on. No gospel of salvation. What about the gospel of salvation? What about the gospel? Of, you ever hear them mention that? Do you ever hear them say that in those particular words and preach that gospel of salvation. They always allude to things, but these guys don't even do that anymore. All they care about is fill in the stadiums, you know, and, and, and God spoke to him about, he's going to do this and have this, this tear of these things happen, this big revival. And I've been hearing that for so many, my wife has too, for so many, probably a lot of you, there's no revival happening. There's no revival going to happen. There was only a remnant during Jesus's earthly kingdom ministry, he was pre preaching. Largely, the nation Israel rejected Jesus Christ. That's why they put him on the cross. But he knew that was gonna happen. That's what he came to do. It was a remnant, a little flock that's going to inherit the kingdom of God. So at any rate, folks, that's enough of these jokers for now. Uh, we're gonna close out this part two here. Again, we appreciate so greatly you guys taking your valuable time to come and watch and pay attention to this here. It's not about how much effort we put into this here. We do. We, we, we really try to research. And we're going to bring some more of these very same people, some more of the very same additional parts of the clips. We can't even show all the stuff here. There's not enough time. We would have a video that would be so long we couldn't even put it on YouTube. 
because there's so much nonsense, so much evil that these guys are spewing out, but they sit there and stand there so matter-of-factly as though it's, it's real, it's true, it's God, and it's not. But they get you captured. They get you, you look at them and you see something and you get emotional. And all they have to do is utter some certain words or play some certain music and, and all of a sudden you, get, you can get mesmerized. Satan gets his hooks into you, folks. He's got, a, he's got bait for every person, every, every walk of life out there. there. There's something for everybody from the, the ones that are dressed up and, and look mighty fine and, and are likable like a Joel Osteen to the, the nutbags that are out there like Heidi Baker that are out there, whoa, and doing all that crazy. I mean, they're all over the place. They're everywhere in between. This is why we have to put in the work. We have to study to show ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. If you'd like to write to us, it's Bobby Faulkner at alreadyforgiven.com. And uh, also you go to our website, which is simply called alreadyforgiven.com. My wife put that together, a lot of information there. And uh, we always, always recommend go to truthtimeradio.com, Trey Searcy. We have some other brothers and sisters out there that that are uh, uh, that watch our YouTubes. We watch theirs and they do uh, some similar things that we do. Uh, check them all out. But uh, Truth Time Radio, you'll find solid rightly divided information but let's let's say a little prayer before we go here lord we just simply thank you for the opportunity to bring this truth rightly divided we are grateful those of us that are watching and listening and paying attention lord that you came down from heaven died was buried and rose on the third day for forgiveness of sins and we trust you lord and we believe your word that says all of our trespasses, all of our sins are forgiven. You nailed them to the cross and that you no longer hold them against us. And please help people, Lord, through our videos, through their, their own study to understand, Lord, that people's sins are already forgiven. As you stated through our apostle Paul in Colossians 2, 13 and 14, they're forgiven and you no longer hold them against anyone. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 Help them to understand that, Lord. You're not imputing their tr our trespasses against us. There will be people that will die and go to hell and the lake of fire with their sins forgiven because they refuse to believe that you paid that price, that exclusively, and that's what we are to believe and trust in. Help us through these videos, Lord, to do that. We pray for all those out there, Lord, that have children, that have relatives, siblings, whoever, Lord, that are, that are struggling with them because they reject them because they rightly divide, that they're trying to see them be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Encourage them, Lord, through your written word. Help them to study rightly divided, to continue to grow and learn. We all know we need you, Lord. People say it all the time. Even these false people, they say, oh, we're, we need a savior. Well, we know it more than, 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 than ever, Lord, that we do need you, but we need you and to understand what you've given us rightly divided. You've given us specific instructions. Help us to always convey those in our videos, Lord, even through the tough things that we expose. And we just love you and thank you in all things. Amen. Well, again, thanks for stopping by, folks. We appreciate it, and we'll see you real soon. Take care. Well, bye. Happy trails to you Until we meet again